In this lesson, we're going to be adding railings to floors 2 through 5. Railings on stairs are pretty much easy. There comes a point, however, where we need to add railings independently from a set of stairs and still tie the railings back into the stair railings. <laughs> Easier said than done. The objective of this exercise is to add the railings to the upper floors by using the railing command and then by adding a series of railing sketches. Open the file you've been working on, or open the file called Chapter 11 and follow along. Under Floor Plans in the Project Browser, let's go down to Level 2. What I want to do is extend these railings out a little bit. We're going to gooseneck them down, we're going to extend them out, then we're going to draw a railing to meet it. What we need to do, though, is establish first a reference plane for the midpoint of this rail. So the first thing I want to do is click the Ref Plane button. If Revit wants you to save, go ahead and do that. I'm going to pick a line on the outside of the stringer. I'm going to pick a point here. I'm going to hit Escape. I'm going to select this reference plane, and I'm going to move it on down 3 inches. That will line me up with the center line of my railing. Next thing I'm going to do is cut a section right through the middle of the stairs so we can start working on this railing. On the Quick Access Toolbar, click the Section button. Pick a point from here to here. Let's move our crop region in so we only see this railing to not get confused with what's going on back here. Let's open up the section. Let's go down to level 1. What we need to do now is offset two lines. Our railing that we're going to tie in is going to be 3 feet off the finished floor, and the top rail will be 3 foot 6 off the finished floor. We need to establish horizontal reference planes to extend our railings down so they meet at a good point. On the Architecture tab, on the Work Plane panel, click the Ref Plane button. Let's give it an offset of 3 feet. On the Draw panel, let's use our Pick Lines button. Let's offset this line up 3 feet. Let's do another offset at 6 inches. Offset that line up 6 inches and hit Escape a couple times. Now we're moving pretty well. New to Revit 2013 is the ability to modify handrails and top rails independently of the entire rail system. What I want to do is hover over this handrail, hit Tab, and only select this handrail. Once we have it selected, we can click on Edit Rail. Now what we want to do is edit the path. So on the Tools panel, click Edit Path. On the Draw panel, click on Line. Let's draw a line down 3 inches. Let's come down to this reference plane. Let's draw a line out 6 inches. And hit Escape. It's great we have the ability to do this now. On the Mode panel, click Finish Edit Mode. Then you'll have to click Finish Edit Mode again to get out of the entire command. And we're extended, goosenecked, everything's good. Now for the top rail, let's do the same thing. Let's tab onto it and select it. Let's click Edit Rail. Let's click Edit Path. Let's click our Line button. Let's extend this down 6 inches. Let's come down to this point and extend it over. Let's go past it a little bit and hit Escape. Let's click the Ref Plane button. Let's draw a reference plane straight up. Hit Escape a couple times. Select this grip, grab it, let's move it back in. So now we're lined up perfectly. On the Mode panel, click Finish Edit Mode, then Finish Edit Mode again. Awesome. Let's go up to Level 2. Let's select our section, and let's flip it. Let's double click on it. Now remember, we're reversed, but I love reference planes, because now we don't really have to remember too much of what we did. Hover over this railing, tab onto it, and select it. 
Click Edit Rail. Click Edit Path. Let's draw a line. Let's go down three inches. Down to this reference plane. And over to this one. And escape a couple times. Click Finish Edit Mode. Click Finish Edit Mode. Let's hover over this railing. Tab onto it. Select it. Click Edit Rail. Click Edit Path. Draw a line. Let's come down six inches. Let's come down to here. Let's terminate it to here. Hit escape a couple times. Click Finish. Click Finish. Beautiful. Now let's go down to level two floor plan. Let's start drawing our railings in. Zoom in on this railing, select it, right click, and create similar. It's kind of funny how this works, but we're going to have to scab it into here for a second. We have this reference plane because we have no ability to snap to this. That's okay. Not the best functionality, but we can get by. We're going to eyeball the nearest point, but make sure you're on this reference plane. Pick it. Start moving your railing out. Let's come out six inches and pick a point. Let's come straight back all the way to this point on this wall. Let's come out four feet. Let's bring the railing over and we'll go past this railing for a second. We'll tie it in. Hit escape. Click line again. Come to the midpoint of this rail. Let's draw it straight out. Revit loses the preview because we're not joined here. But if we click trim, we'll get our preview back. If you're not seeing your preview at all, make sure you click the preview button on the options panel. Although it doesn't look joined here, it is. Hit escape a couple times and click finish edit mode. Go to a 3D view. Let's go up to the second floor. Let's take a look. Our railing is coming around and it's tied in. We have a nice landing here. We have an okay landing here. Let's go down to level two. Let's select this railing. And let's mirror it by using pick axis. Let's pick the center line or the grid reference and mirror it. Select it, click Edit Path. Let's delete these three lines. Let's start our line command. Let's pick a point on the end point. Let's bring it into this face. Let's run it straight down to the wall. Click Finish Edit Mode, and we're good. Now let's just add one more railing to tie into this, and to come down and in. What we'll do is right-click on this railing, create similar. Let's come into the railing center line. Let's draw a line out one foot ten. Come up so we're in alignment with this floor line. Click that point. Come back in. Let's just trace this floor line all the way back to the back wall. Hit escape a couple times. Click finish edit mode. And our railings are tied in. Now select these railings. On the clipboard panel, click the Copy to Clipboard button. Now for Paste, click Paste drop-down. Let's go Aligned to Selected Levels. We're going to go to 3, 4, then 5. Hit OK. Go to a 3D view. And we're good all the way up until we get to level 5. Level 5 will have a problem. 
we don't need this big hole here. That's okay. Let's go up to level 5. Let's delete this railing extension. Select this railing. Click Edit Path. Let's offset a line back 6 inches from the face of the slab. Click Trim Extend the Corner. Let's trim this corner off. Let's pull this so we're extended into the wall. Click Finish Edit Mode. Go to 3D View. And the fifth floor looks good. Wow. Oh, okay, railings aren't that tough, but can you imagine having to draft those first in plan, then an elevation, then an isometric? Revit makes it so you only have to do this stuff once.